I'm Simon Dent and I'm racing the Dragon's Back race. Three hundred eighty-eight kilometres, six days, seventeen thousand metres of climbing, and around thirty mountains. Dragon's Back Race is billed as the toughest mountain ultra in the world. I've been training for eleven months now. Um, I've been putting in roughly fifty to hundred mile weeks, mainly here in the South Downs, but I have taken part in five recce weekends along the route. Um, yeah, it's been quite hard training, but I'm confident I'm in a good place and yeah, ready to slay the dragon. Over the last six years running ultras, I have found them um, more and more comfortable. Um, they are challenging, but I've found that by doing the work, um, I've always crossed the finish line. I think what I want to do um, in 2024 is to find something that was really outside my comfort zone. I've always been quite scared of heights and uh, that, that has been a, a, a big thing throughout my life. So finding the toughest mountain ultra in the world um, worked perfectly well because the moment I clicked um, by, I had a real gut wrench. It's been a bit of an eye opener, and as I said, having you know a, a sort of bit of a fear of heights growing up, that was something that really tested me. Um, and it, it really altered the type of training. I mean, you know, sat in my gym now, um, I've done a lot of bear crawling work, which again, obviously, as you know, is sort of four hands, sorry, four hands, two hands, two feet on the floor, um, getting yourself in that position, um, traversing along walls, um, doing weight, lots of back weights, um, forearms, stomach. So yeah, as much as it's an ultra, um, a lot of the time I'll have my hands on the floor or on a, the side of a mountain, which sort of sums it up. <laughs> the conquering of the fear has been quite interesting because it has been definitely a process. It's been reading books, watching films. Um, I saw a hypnotherapist, she, she was amazing. Um, and, but it's all been those sort of bricks, those small building bricks to which, as mentioned, um, in April I went to Crib Gok, which was in a group of 20 people. And that was, I was quite scared crossing the ridge. Um, but then last weekend, last Friday, um, I was in a mountain guide, just the two of us, and I felt a lot more confident. I stood up on the ridge, traversed the ridge, um, didn't have that dripping sweat down my back and on my forehead and um, and then coming home and even now um, really excited really excited about getting back up there and whatever happens this week um, that will be a huge take out of this year for me that I've conquered that fear people often ask why um, and there are a number of reasons but I think that for me I'm, I'm just so curious about fulfilling my potential um, I didn't really play sports with a serious level growing up. Um, I've always been a big sports fan. I've always been surrounded by sporting excellence. And I've managed to find a sport which I believe that I'm, I'm pretty good at. Obviously, I'm 48 now, so the clock is ticking. But yeah, I'm really excited to just explore my potential and see how far I can go. I'm you know, sat here now. Um, I'm quietly confident. I wouldn't say I'm overconfident. I've done the work, I've done the preparation, um, but I suppose I'm, I'm definitely um, prepared for success. But at the same time, um, if I fail, I'll take a number of lessons from that. One of the big challenges we've got over the six days is that the race is self-navigation. So what that basically means is we get issued with a map um, at the registration on the Sunday night. And yeah, we are, navigating our way from Conway to Cardiff. We have a number of checkpoints we have to go through. Obviously we have designated camping spots, but yeah, the GPX files are on our Garmin's and we are um, finding our own way. So this is something that um, I'm anticipating to be quite tricky because um, yeah, we're out in the sticks and it's six days in the mountains looking at your wrist. So wish me luck. Yeah, one of the challenges um, that we've got in race week is obviously the amount of calories we burn. Um, it's likely that we're we'll burning anything between 5,000 and 7,000 calories a day. So actually getting that amount of calories in is going to be really challenging. There's nothing worse than bonking in a race. And I'm sure lots of you experience that where you just, you just run out of steam completely. And, and as we all know, you sort of, if you feel hungry, it's probably already too late. So staying on top of nutrition is going to be a pretty substantial thing. Stomach issues are a big problem in, in endurance races and even more so in stage races over a number of days. Um, 
I had issues before I started working Vela Forte and it's basically changed my running. And then that was always a big concern. We'll be going out and you've done all the work, but then actually you're, you get derailed by stomach issues. So thankfully I don't have that anymore. Um, the ingredients of Vela Forte have are all natural, which is obviously amazing. So this week there will be a lot of Vela Forte products in my bag. Um, I'm expecting to be on my feet for between 12 and 14 hours a day, so it's quite a long time. Um, but yeah, a few sort of hot picks for, for you guys. My three favourite bars, Mocha, which is um, coffee base, which is a, a great start to the day. Avanti, which is um, sea salt and dates. And the Classico, which I believe was the very first bar, um, which is almonds and honey. So. These are my three favorite bars and I'll probably be over the week um, be having sort of close to, yeah, 15 of these, uh, maybe more. Um, and then when it comes to gels, um, my favorites are Reba and Doppio. Doppio is coffee based, um, which again in the mornings works really well. I'll probably have two or three of those between 6 a.m. and midday. And then Reba is berry based. So obviously training has been a massive part of the preparation for Dragon's Back. Um, I've been training for, yeah, probably 11 months now. Um, and that, various sort of cycles going in out of other races. But for me, I think three of the most important things, first is been wrecking the route. So obviously um, we're running from Conway Castle to Cardiff Castle. Um, we roughly know the route. We can look at the, the route from previous years and we know it'll be relatively the same. So spending time in the mountains has been key. Um, it's just such different running. Um, and one of the biggest things that I've, I've really learned is that um, don't assume that running downhill is faster than running uphill. Um, I've discovered, certainly in my last two recce's, that actually um, you've got to be really careful on this terrain running down, especially the, uh, when you're in the Slate Mountain. So wrecking the route, really, really important. I think rest is really key. Um, had a bit of a virus, actually quite a severe virus, um, whooping cough in May and didn't listen to my body. I kept training, um, which obviously didn't help. So what was um, initially a three weeks sort of break from running became a bit more. So absolutely always listen to your body. And I know it's quite hard when you're into your running or cycling, but yeah, you do have to give yourself rest. And then I think the third thing is, is enjoy it. I think I often sort of wonder, um, I'm doing these pretty hard challenges and they, they do take you to quite a dark place, but what I'm quite excited about um, being on the start line is just reminding myself that, that I did sign up for this and this is fun and it is type two fun, but we're gonna see one of the most beautiful countries in the world and it's an absolute privilege to be able to run. So yeah, keeping those three things at the forefront of your mind when training I think are key. One of the main reasons I've, I've entered the Dragon's Back is for the fundraising element. Fundraising for Delalia Rugby Works and Greenhouse Sports, both are charities that are um, focused around youth. Um, Greenhouse Sports provides um, PE coaches for schools that don't have PE. And speaking from personal experience, I couldn't imagine a childhood or school days without PE. It's where I built my strongest bonds with friends. Um, so yeah, we, it, it costs 25,000 pounds to get a, a coach into a school that doesn't have PE. So that's a huge motivator and I'm excited to be raising money for them. And then Delalia Rugby Works um, is a charity very close to my heart. Um, Basically, they provide life skills for children that have been excluded from mainstream education. Um, and there's some alarming statistics around the number of children that end up in the prison system if they've been excluded from school. It's around 70%. And obviously, that is, a, again, an alarming statistic that I've spent a lot of time with these, with these youths. I was down in Cardiff, did a fun run with them a couple of weeks ago. And they're just like me and my mates when we were that age. And, you know, just one wrong decision then gets you sort of stereotyped and put on that path to being incarcerated. It's quite alarming. So, yeah, two great charities, two focused on sport and two focused on youth. So, yeah, hopefully we can raise some money.